Welcome to Bumpke's Farm. My name is Kyle Schutt with Discovery Education. I've got my friend Justin here with me. Hi guys. We'll meet and learn, whoa, we've got technology too. We'll meet and learn from Justin all the great stuff happening inside of this mm -hmm. cab later in the show. We had the opportunity last fall to come here to Bumpke's Farm and to learn all about the harvest season. We're gonna talk later on about the new planting going on right now in the spring. And of course, we'll talk about Earth Day, which was just yesterday. Can't wait for you to join us. So let's go hear from Brian Bomke, the owner and operator of Bomke Farm. Hi, I'm Brian Bomke. Welcome to Bomke's Farm. Our family roots run all the way back to President Abraham Lincoln, who was our family's lawyer back for my third and fourth generation grandfathers. The farm consists of 4,500 acres of crops. 60% of that is corn. 40% of that is beans and another 100 acres of pasture. We have approximately 42 head of cattle, we, and we also have 14,000 Christmas trees and 10 acres of pumpkins. Today you're gonna to meet some of my family members, my wife Kathy, my son Justin, my son-in-law Jason, and Ed our agronomist. So come follow me and I'll show you the farm. Today we're harvesting soybeans. Jason, my son-in-law, is running the combine. Once he gets a full hopper, it will be taken to the semis, dumped on the semis, which we take to the local elevator. My son-in-law used to be a cat engineer for Caterpillar, which helps him a lot understand all the technology we have in our combine now. So we're gonna join Jason here to see what kind of technology we're using on the farm. I'm Jason Podarny, and I'm part owner-operator of Bobke Farms, and today we're harvesting soybeans. I became part of Bobke Farms about four years ago Previously to that, I was a hydraulic test engineer, but grew up as a farm kid. So farming has been in my blood ever since I was born. I would ride in the tractor and the combine with my dad every time I got the chance. And every time I was at school, I hoped to come home and something would be going on. I'd like to show you a little of the combine that we're sitting in today. This is a basic machine. You have your steering wheel and you have your joystick that makes it go forward and backward depending on how fast you can go. I know there's a lot of buttons on here and they all do specific things but they're all important to running this machine correctly. Up here you can see the monitor that I use to drive the machine very straight. The monitor down here shows the combine what it is doing and all my set points. Different crops require different set points as far as sifting out the fines, the big pieces and the little pieces, so all we get is pure grain in the tank. In the corner here, we have another monitor that shows me the power and the fuel that I'm using. We like machines that are very fuel efficient around here on this farm. So thanks for joining me today. So we're here inside the Bombkeys farm and we had the opportunity to uh, see the harvest season to, to learn about the technology su such cool stuff going inside of that <laughs> yeah. tractor that's for sure and of course I, I love that you ended that segment with we we really like fuel efficient vehicles here on the farm because it's so appropriate earth yeah. day earth week we know students all across the country and really uh, around the world have been celebrating they've been downloading activities all kinds of fun stuff we're excited that you're learning with us today so we're gonna have a, a lot of fun ask some questions get some answers out there uh, i think we have uh, a challenge lined up for later on in this show as well so Thanks for hosting us today, guys. This You're is welcome. This, this is great. Out. Excited to be here. So I, I did a little bit of research. Of course, we mentioned we were here in the harvest season. We had the opportunity to see what that was like. It's now early springtime, lots of new planting going on. Mm -hmm. So kind of a different shift for you. But in between, I was learning about you know, what is this event going to be like? And what is it like to be on a working farm? One of the things, I don't know if you saw this or not, but the, uh, the UN General Assembly declared 2015 the International Year of the Soils. So that's really appropriate, relevant yeah, to, to yeah. both Earth Day and what we're learning about today. And so if you have questions about that or anything else as you go throughout the show, we encourage you, use that questions box just below your media player, below that viewing window on the website there. Send us your questions. We'd love to, to answer some of those later in the show. And of course, if you are on Twitter, we'd love for you to share your questions. Use that hashtag, ScienceOfSoilVFT. 
hashtag science of soil VFT. And not only questions, we love learning and, and seeing what your learning environments look like. So if you're in a classroom or an auditorium, wherever you're watching from today, take a picture, tweet to us. We love to go back after the show and see what it looked like for, right. for everybody on the other side of the camera, That's right? right? That's, That's right. right. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, we're going to jump right in. We have lots of great questions that, that have been coming on over the past couple of days, too, because we've had this open. So Jason, thanks again uh, for being here. Sure. One specific question that kept coming in, and of course even more now that we, we saw the technology <laughs> in the tractor, but how is technology so important in the harvest process, specifically you know, around the soybeans and, and that kind of thing? Well, that's a great question, Kyle. Uh, there's a lot of technology in the, uh, that combine. It is a huge machine, and you can maneuver very well. You can ask Brian, it's pretty hard to pry me out of that seat because <laughs> I love driving it. That's right. But uh, there's technology to keep it straight, driving with GPS, keep the head on the ground, so we're cutting real close. And in fact, there's there's technology and right now that they're seeing. What is that that they're taking? They're looking at a yield map, okay. and that combine can produce a map showing us where the most grain came out of the field. So the green areas are good on the left of the screen there, and the red are bad. And on the right, we also record like the season now, what varieties we plant. So the yellow is one color, the green is another, and the purple is another, and you can see that one variety did a little better than the other. But how this relates to the nutrients is we can tell definitely how much nutrient we took out of the soil. If we have a good crop, we need to replace more nutrients in the soil. If we have a bad crop, we might not have to replace as many, and that way we don't overdo it and uh, waste our budget either. Yeah. I've been learning so much about tech. You think about a farm, you don't always go to the technology angle, but it's really infil infiltrated our everyday life. And you mentioned the GPS technology. When I had the chance earlier to, to ride in the tractor, he was mentioning how the GPS could keep not only the tractor straight, but whatever you're towing behind it often has a GPS so that they can work kind of together in tandem right, to, right. to plow that straight straight Perfectly line which is, straight. Yeah. it's just incredible when you think about mapping and farming you, you would have never ne necessarily put those together that's right you know so all right well lots of other questions coming in let's go ahead to one from ashley and ashley's at eisenhower elementary hi ashley hope you're uh, you're enjoying the show so far ashley wants to know how do you know when it's time to plant different crops in different seasons Brian? well ashley we plant our corn soybeans in the spring season and there's really three factors we, we consider before we take the planters to the field. One is we want to know what the soil temperature is at the four inch level. We want 50 degrees or better for corn, 55 degrees or better for soybeans. That way we have proper germination of the seed. The next thing we like to have, we like to have dry soil. We want good soil to seed contact. We don't want to have any compaction around the seed or in the field itself. The third thing is we want to go by the calendar a little bit. Our last killing frost is around April 15th in this area. We try to plant the middle of April, and the corn usually emerges anywhere from uh, 10 days to three weeks. So by the time our corn emerges out of the ground, we're way past the frost date. After we plant our corn, we usually switch our planters over to our soybeans. Our soybeans are usually planted somewhere around the last part of April to the first of May. So, so there's there's a lot of there, a lot of science going on here. You mentioned a little bit about the planting season. So mm -hmm. you're using data, both climate data and, and so forth, but also kind of uh, the year to year, the weather data, how how things are adjusting right, and so right. forth. You could you could have warm weather in in the March, but we wouldn't want to go out there and plant in the March. You could have 50 degree ground temperature, but then you take the chance of being frosted. So we kind of got to. We kind of got to follow the counter a little bit. Yeah, so it's really a balance of the right. two. Very interesting. Right. Lots of science here, as, as you're going to learn as we go throughout here. So uh, more questions coming in. Uh, Eliana from Legacy Classic Christian School, she wanted to know, how does crop rotation help the soil? Right. Eliana, uh, on, on our farm, we do a corn-soybean crop rotation. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Soybeans are a legume-type plant. A legume-type plant takes the nitrogen from the air takes it down to the plant in the root system where it fixes nitrogen into the soil. Well, that nitrogen there is then there for the corn crop the following year. So that's the reason we go from soybeans to corn. The corn plant is amazing, has an amazing ability to produce organic matter. The average corn crop can produce anywhere from a half to two tons of organic matter per acre per year, whereas the soybean can only produce one third of a ton per acre per year. So by rotating into corn, we're adding a lot of organic matter back into the soil, which we all know helps soil erosion. 
The third thing we want to do, we want to make sure we break up the disease cycle. If we were to plant corn after corn, soybean after soybean for multiple years, sooner or later the disease pressure would be so high it would be, it'd be hard to handle. So we want to break the soybean or the disease cycle of the soybean and the corn plant. So we, that's why we rotate back and forth. Okay, thank you. Great questions and, and great answers as well. Um, Mr. LaFoon's class, more on a personal level here, is it hard to be a farmer and what kind of far, uh, chores do farmers do? I, I would say it, it is hard being a farmer. It's, it's a, a love for the lifestyle, I guess you could say, that uh, <clears throat> going out and doing the chores every morning, we raise cattle that we feed every day. Uh, we have goats, we have chickens, and uh, the common household pets, you know, dogs and cats. But uh, everyone works together here on the farm, so the chores don't seem like they are chores to yeah, us. Everybody chips in with everyone the shared responsibility. In. I like That's that. Right. <laughs> What would you say? Brian? Well, with all the technology we have now, we can go later and later in the night, and it, it's just, it's, it really is tough to decide when to shut down because we have tractors now that can go all through the night with the lights we have, with the GPS ability we have to steer them at nighttime, and it's just, it's just, it's really a, you know, it's, it's, it's a long day. That's yeah. a, it's a long day sometimes. It so. is, it is. Well, yeah. Jason, thank you so much for sharing with us. Uh, we're going to learn a little bit now about the harvest season, specifically, uh, Justin. Another of your family members, your brother, right? Brother he's going to, he's going to, yes. brother-in-law. Yep. Sorry, uh, he's <laughs> going to go ahead and share with us um, how how often, uh, how many people work here, how many hours a day, a little bit of information like that. Let's go ahead and take a look. <laughs> 